Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Trig Podcast. I'm joining Gosa TV on this lovely Thanksgiving week. Today, indeed, is Tuesday, November 23rd, only two days before Thanksgiving. I am thankful for you, my Gosa family, my Gosa nation, my Gosa friends, my Gosa heads <laughs> on this Thanksgiving week, even though it's been a tough year for many of us, including my beautiful wife and I and our family. We know that though there is pain in the night, go so it comes in the morning. That's Psalm 30, verse 5, by the way. And if you want to learn more about what Goso provides and our services, please check out my podcast. You can look it up anywhere, Spotify, Apple Music, uh, YouTube, and all the rest. You can just type in my name and you can see the latest episode. I believe it's episode 473. Yes, the real purpose and story behind Goso. But I posted just uh, this morning on Instagram at David Trigg, you can follow me there, uh, eight values, eight principles that we carry as a family in times of mourning and loss. And this came because, as you may know, we have experienced, as many of us have, a lot of loss in 2021. First, I think it was in June, July, August, my beautiful wife lost her job. Then in August, I lost my job. So how about that for a summer? Then in the same week, August, my beautiful wife lost her mother. So yes, her mother, beautiful Lynette Baker, rest in peace, my beautiful mother-in-law. And then that same week, her father had major cancer surgery and he's still in the hospital. He hasn't recovered. And so we're dealing with that. So as you can imagine, there's been a ton on our minds and hearts, a lot of heaviness. And we're of course hanging on to Jesus as a family, not only the two of us, but all five of us as a family. And it's been tough. Not having a church community has really been hard in times of loss. And then, of course, the whole income thing. And God has been faithful. We are surviving. We are doing well. But we do welcome your prayers. And if you would like to support our ministry, you can go to buymeacoffee.com slash David Trigg. If you would like to support our ministry, we're basically trying to establish just our our footing again and to really go through, get through this storm. But these are the eight principles that we hold during times like this like these so that maybe if you're going through something similar maybe even more challenging you can use some of these values number one is jesus and community i think we cannot underestimate the power of having our savior next to us along with community and even though we don't have a church community right now we are watching cottonwood online every sunday morning I also have my beautiful friends from Victory Outreach Southeast LA, shout out to them. We also have, of course, our family, but this major and this first point is crucial. You have to have Jesus at the center of your life, as well as friends and family and a church community that supports you, that is there by your side. Number two is the value of having honest conversations and support. This is something that we practice together, Rochelle and I, every morning. We have coffee time for 20 minutes. The children, the five of us, we also talk, I would say, almost every day to process, to feel, to think. We have Bible studies. Every Sunday we gather and we watch church online, and afterwards we talk about what God is telling us. We are just uh, working on how we're feeling, talking things through. We have learned the value of conversation and that is really i think what helps the most is to have conversations as a family not texting not instagram dming but actual having face-to-face conversations in around the table in the living room just uh to support each other and in person number three is therapy and healing We are big believers and advocates for therapy, whether it's through a counselor, whether it's through an app, or maybe a pastor or someone that is trained, a life coach. This is very important because it it can't just be you and your phone. You have to have something and someone especially that can that has professional input and advice, that has seen cases like yours and mine many times and knows how to navigate and help you 
get to a better place in your mind. And so New Hope Grief Support Group is an, a wonderful nonprofit. Of course, also SIFT, which is a place where I have been a part of for many years, is a great therapy and counseling center here in the LA area. And there, of course, are many places that are free, that are online, that are very effective. And so, and that's not to say that biblical healing isn't important. Of course, prayer and having the right tools and your the Bible and your prayer time worship is, of course, powerful. But sometimes we need that that relational and professional input. Number four is grace, grace, and more grace. When things like this happen, it's easy to beat yourself up, to feel like you're no good, you're not worthy of love, that you should be stronger, that you shouldn't be weak, that you should be happy, that you should pray more. All of these shoulds and would've and could'ves and things that you are you feel shame over or guilt over, Give yourself and others grace. And both are important to give yourself grace, but also to extend grace, to not hold things over other people's heads right now because everyone's going through a lot. And when we are hurting, it can be it can be easy for us to demand more from others. So step, take a step back, give yourself grace, meaning forgive yourself. Like someone says, speak to yourself like you speak to your best friend. You would never say to your best friend, what's wrong with you? Just get out of here. Get your act together. I mean, you might do that maybe once, but you're not going to constantly talk that way to your best friend. So talk to yourself in the same way. Give yourself a lot of a lot of grace, a lot of space, a lot of compassion, a lot of self-care, a lot of Jesus. Number six, look at the bright side. Even even through this challenge, uh, there have been some bright moments. I have some friends that I'm doing music with that I just love that has come as a result of me not having a job. Uh, my beautiful wife is teaching again. She has been a principal for many years, and she loves teaching. It's been a joy for her to work with kids once again. There have been many positives, and when we focus on the positive, it, it gives us hope. It's a window to hope, and so... It, it can be a challenge sometimes, <clears throat> excuse me, to make a, make a list of the things you're thankful for, especially if you do lose someone or if you got sick because of this virus or you have some financial crisis. But it's a discipline that really pays huge dividends to make a gratitude list, to start with gratefulness, to start with thankfulness, to verbally say that. So for me, as I said, I'm thankful for my salvation, first of all, that Jesus Christ saved me. I'm thankful for all of the music that I've been writing and the people that I've been sharing it with and, and doing music with, the friends and the partners in crime that I've had the joy to do music with. That's been a really beautiful thing. I've also, it's been a joy and a privilege to serve my wife. Her parents are not well. Her mom passed away and she was there for me when I lost my father and I lost my second mother, my grandmother. And so how can I not be there for my wife? And that's been a privilege and a joy. Number seven, follow your joy. Speaking of, follow your joy. Just because we're going through tough times doesn't mean that we can not still do the things that we love to do. And so ask yourself, what is your joy? Now, you may say, I don't have any joy. I don't feel anything happy. I don't feel happy. I don't feel like anything is positive. This is where disciplines come in, spiritual disciplines, to, to consider it all joy. And not just to consider it, but to actually practice joy. Exercise, going for a walk, looking at the sky. The other day, I, I posted a picture on Instagram at David Trey. You can follow me there. And I was noticing the piano and some of the stuff on the screen that I was doing. My beautiful wife noticed the sky behind me. And then it made me focus on the sky, and it was truly beautiful. That brought me a lot of joy. Focus on your joy. Is it working? Is it being home? Is it playing with your dog? As you know, we have Daisy the dog who we love. She brings me so much joy. We also have our bunny, Rosie the bunny. Those simple joys can really mean a lot. Going on a bike ride, just uh, having your favorite coffee, listening to your favorite worship track or song. All of these things bring you joy. Follow your joy. Don't get stuck in the gutter. And then most of all, this is a funny one, C's Candy and Starbucks. <laughs> C's Candy. Man, <clears throat> we are a fan of C's Candy, especially this time of the year in Starbucks. The point is, do things that are just a little bit outside the box, but <clears throat> that you really enjoy and that 
uh, can help you have some comfort, some comfort food in these difficult times. So those are the things, the eight things that we as a family practice, not perfectly, it's not a competition, but we do it to to heal. We do it to bring ourselves closer to God and to help the people that we love and to process life and to expect great things because we know that, yes, as the Bible says, there is pain in the night, but gozo, joy, a new day comes in the morning. We will get through this, whatever you're going through. We will get through this, and God has a purpose and a plan for this. We know that He is faithful. We know that He is good. And all of these tools and techniques and tips and tricks are all here to just help you and I Stay focused on the joy of Jesus, on the grace that is to come. He has a great plan for our lives. Yes, right now we go through trials and tribulations. Jesus said, in this world you will have many trials. I have a friend who says life is 50-50. 50% of the time it's amazing, 50% not so amazing. And Jesus said it. You will, in this in this world, face many trials, but be of good gozo, be of good courage. I have overcome the world. And so hang on to the truth of God. If you do need a life coach, I am a certified um, coach in the area of mental health. I would love to talk to you and be there for you. You can just reach out to me at davidtrigg.com and or on my Instagram. It's probably the best way, at davidtrigg, and I'd love to be here to help you. Also, if you are looking to do music, you know I have a studio. I'd love to help you with that and to provide recording space and production skills and all that stuff. So I hope that these tips can help you to live a life of gozo. Gozo doesn't always look like things are amazing. Sometimes it's strength, it's courage, it's most of all faith in God. And like Nehemiah said, don't weep because the joy of the Lord is your strength. That doesn't mean that we shouldn't cry. It just means that there is something even greater than our tears. And that is the strength of God called Gozo. Thank you again for being here and I will see you next time.